What up, what up, my guys? Happy Easter, Easter Sunday, man. Everybody that celebrate out there, man. It's all love. Uh, we appreciate everybody for tuning in. Sunday NBA talk with Jay. We got our guy LJ with us. We got our guy Crispy Captain as well. Uh, trying to get some cash as we do every single day. LJ, what's up with you, my brother? Everything cool with you? Oh, everything's good, Jay Money. Happy Easter to both y'all, Chris. My guy Jay, you know, all the people in the chat, you know. Yes, sir. N- nice late today, you know, got a couple spots we want to look into, but hey, try to get some money so we get these people some wins, man. I'm right there with that. What's up with you, Chris? Everything cool with you, my brother? Yeah, sir. As uh, as both of y'all said, man, happy Easter to to the kings on the show, to to all the kings and the queens in the comments as well, man. So it's a nice slate of basketball today, Jay. Let's let's find some winners, man. Yeah, let's get straight to it, man. We ain't here to waste the people's time. It's all business on the show. Uh, it's not about what happened yesterday. It's all about what's going on today. They put the lines out, and we try to figure out who's going to win and by how much. You know what I'm saying? So let's get straight to it in this one. First game up, early game. We're going to the streets of Denver in this one. Nuggets laying five points at the house versus the Cavs in this one. Nuggets coming off back-to-back losses here, uh, Chris. What you what are you thinking in this game, my brother? Yeah, Jay, that was, that was something interesting that you said. I wanted to go back and look into that. Denver hasn't lost back-to-back home games since March the 14th, 2022. So it's been Great. two years and two weeks Shit. since uh, this team has lost back-to-back games, Jay. But with all that said, we know Jamal Murray is listed as questionable in this game. Mm-hmm. And, and without him, they could potentially lose again. I know Minnesota felt fact. so good. I know they felt good coming in there getting the win because they, they've been on Denver for a while. <laughs> they finally got a chance. And now they're number one in the Western Conference. And you got Denver who slid back to three. Uh, Mm -hmm. with OKC at number two now. So it's, you know, all the motivation in this spot for Denver. Um, Cleveland, they they starting to get healthy, though, Jay. They got, they got uh, you know, Donovan Mitchell came back. You got Max Struess back as well. And uh, these short lines, they they typically don't play well for for, for Denver. Um, I looked at them in this spot, just four and six. I'm sorry, my fault, just four and seven against the spread when they're laying six points or less. So this line is coming down, Jay. I think Cleveland could be live in this game, but with all that said, I, I do need to know the status of Jamal Murray. What I think is going to happen, Jay, because I did go through, listen to the beat reporters, uh, listen to, uh, you know, uh, Donovan Mitchell as well, and he mm-hmm. talked about each game now being a playoff game. They think that they got to play all these games with a playoff-style atmosphere. And uh, to me, that screams defense. I know that their defense is going to be Thanks. a little bit better with Max Struess in because you get gorgeous Niang back on the bench where he belongs. And uh, you, got Donovan, <laughs> you got Donovan Mitchell back in there with helps the defense as well, Jay. <laughs> so uh, I, 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 what I want to do is I want Jamal Murray to be ruled in. I will stay off the side, and I want to play the total to go under because I know if he yeah. comes back, the total will go up. So I want the under in this game, Jay, more than I want the side. Um, I, I'll leave the side out there, uh, but I do want I want the under for sure, Jay, in this game. Yeah, that definitely would be a playoff style type of game. I mean, the Nuggets have been playing super slow as well, LJ. Um, so, I mean, if the Cavs, obviously, I mean, this is a defensive team, just like Chris said. I mean, they got Mobley back. They got Max Strews. They got Donovan Mitchell. Now they're full health. They don't really have any excuses to be losing some of these games. We know Cavs with everybody in there, like they can ball. And you got two guys that you can kind of throw at Jokic. Jared Allen's no pushover down low. And you got Evan Mobley that could do like the roamer, be like that, that rover type of where he could guard him on the perimeter, have Jared Allen just guard the basket, LJ. So, uh, this this could actually be a potentially really good matchup here for the Cavs. What do you think about this? Do you think the Nuggets have any chance of losing three straight uh, three straight games? They do. Like Chris just mentioned, if Jamal Murray is not ruled in because he's very, very vital to that, that potent offense. And uh, the Cavs, since the urgency, like Chris just mentioned, I, I heard the comments as well. This is what They're really to make a little playoff push, you know, since the urgency. The team's getting healthy, like y'all both mentioned. You know, and this is a revenge for Denver. You know, they lost to the Cavs, 121-109 in Cleveland. So, Mobley played that game. He had a double-double. Donovan Mitchell didn't play that game. And Mm -hmm. Jamal Murray didn't play that game as well. So Mm -hmm. those are one of the key reasons why I'm off of a side. I really, really want to lean an under. As Chris mentioned, under 215. Cavs 7-4 to the under last 11 on the road. Denver 4-0 to the under in day games, like Chris mentioned early on his show. And uh, I always mentioned, I mentioned this to Chris on the show one time. Denver is only six and nine straight up with one starter out with above 500 teams. So yeah, they don't facts. really play well in this spot if they don't have all their players. And they, they, they need are everybody. at home versus the East, but that's just straight up. That's not against the spread. So for those reasons, I stayed off the side, but I'm just going to stick to the prop. I'm always taking with Jokic. I'm going to take his over eight and a half assists. He's had mm-hmm. it in the last four, four home games. It's plus 110 too. So I think that's a good price. Plus, 
he's averaging 10 assists in his last four games versus the Eastern Conference. So I'm going to stick to the eight and a half assists for Jokic because I believe, like you just mentioned, he can bang with those big bodies. He's probably not going to score that much. He's going to have to look to facilitate, especially if Jamal Murray is ruled out. So that's my prop for the game. But far as a side total, I stayed off. I like that Jokic assist. I can't talk to y'all. He might go for a triple double in this game. Um, yeah. like back to back to back home losses for the Nuggets. I just can't bet against them. Uh, I know the beat writer was telling me it was like they they like they hate uh losing back to back game. I think this is a smash spot. He was telling me that versus the Suns. Well, they went out there and lost straight up. And then the game versus the Wolves really because I mean they were down 15 from the start of the game. And they yeah. was like I believe the Wolves won that one like wire to wire. They were I don't think they ever uh were down that game. So those are a little surprising. Maybe the Nuggets are starting to take their foot off the gas. But because, I, I mean, I just feel like that Wolves game was just super fish. Even though Jamal Murray didn't play, it just almost seemed like they didn't even really care in that game. They usually make a play, uh, make a run in the game. Not that time. You see what I'm saying? So, um, it, But, yeah, definitely need to see what's up with Jamal Murray. For whatever reason, Nuggets just can't seem to put things together when one of their starters is out, man. It's pretty it's pretty crazy there. You see what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, it's a tough game. I'll watch it. I'll, I'll um Maybe make some live bets here, but I like the Jokic assist, and then I couldn't talk you off uh, on that under as well, Chris. Definitely need to see what's up with Jamal uh, Murray as well. Let's go over to the streets of Toronto in this one, guys. Raptors getting nine and a half points at the house uh, versus the Philadelphia 76 in this. I mean, the Raptors have lost damn near every game for a while. Looks like they will get R.J. Barrett back uh, in this one. Quickly still out, reconditioning. Uh, man, the Raptors have just been on a huge uh, – and I love it. Like, I'm talking about smash their, win, their season went to owner. I love it, like – they could, I mean, please just keep losing, <laughs> and it just it's just got a smile on my face, man. But uh, Sixers have not won yet since getting screwed off from the refs. You know what I'm saying? And they have owned the Raptors as well. They've won six straight. Obviously, they're laying a ton of points here on the road. Um, but Chris, what do you think about this game, my brother? Man, so Jay, I don't know if you, you probably saw it, but uh, you know, uh, Maxi just got downgraded to questionable. That's what it illness. Is. Yeah, that's what that's why that line dropped, man. Because I looked at the line, and said, "Damn, you got Philly laying eleven and a half." And now, granted, it's Toronto, and they, like you said, they've been <laughs> trash, just two and eight against the spread in their last ten games. Uh, I'm not sure if RJ's gonna play. Jay. I know he got upgraded to questionable, but yeah. he may still not play. Abaji took that that real hard fall, landed on his hip. He he's gonna be out this game, missed this game as well. Uh, this was a game that I look more towards the under on, Jay. I just feel like whenever I see Philly laying this many points without Embiid, that 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 to me scary. That's that's kind of scary. Um, they do have some matchup advantages, of course, with Tyrese Maxey and being able to get out and run in transition. Uh, Toronto just bottom three in all kind of defensive categories as far as transition, but they are t- Toronto. They they defend the three point line well, Jay, which is crazy. Uh, best defense against above the break three, which is where Maxey, uh, guys like Buddy Hill. Guys like um, like uh, Kelly Oubre shoot a lot of those threes. So I lean towards the under a little bit more. I know that the total is dropping now. Uh, maybe even look, if RJ Barrett is not playing, I'm probably going to put a little, not a full unit, but I'll play Toronto team total under 103 and a half. Right. Just because Philly, Philly has been playing really good defense. I look back at it. Toronto's played their last five games. Uh, they haven't scored 104 points in any of those last five home games, averaging just 97 per game, Jay. So I think... Uh, Philly could also still struggle to score. They're not an offensive juggernaut. So t- Toronto team total under 103 and a half would be the strongest look here, but it's not anything that I put money on yet. Yeah, and it's been cashing consistently as well. The Raptors offense is not good, especially without quickly. Like, even if Barry comes back, he's probably going to be a little rusty. Reason why I think that he's going to come back because he said that his brother uh feel like that he would see him like to see him play. So I really feel like RJ Bear, like if he's not ruled out yet, because remember him and quickly have been ruled out with recon uh with uh recondition with condition or whatever. So I feel like Bear probably comes back in this one. But if Maxie's out, that definitely helps out the under. Obviously, he pushed the pace. He's obviously the main catalyst on offense for the six is over there as well and they would obviously be out there starting point guard so uh lj what do you think about the under y'all like the undertakers man what do you think about the under here i'm on the under 218 i already liked it <laughs> in. I see you got a 216 but i liked it in at 218 um both teams you know they're, they're gonna struggle to score man uh both teams slacking in offense in toronto they're horrible against their division man oh and six at home versus the division three and eleven against the spread versus the division one and thirteen straight up so they play horrible. 15 and 5 against the spread as a home dog. I mean, it's just horrible numbers for Toronto. And the 76ers, like Chris just mentioned, the fact that Maxi's questionable now, where they'll get the scoring from. You know, I just don't see any type of scoring in this game. So I was looking at the first half just because the Sixers are 73 against the spread in the first half on the road last 10. But I looked at the numbers and they're really only averaging 50 points in the first half, their last five. And Toronto is averaging 50 points in the first half, last five. So it could be a wash. So 
for all those reasons, man, I just I just stick to the under. 76ers 12 and 5 to the under last 17. Toronto 8 and 4 to the under last 12 at home. And like I always mention, I had that uh that angle with teams that play the Knicks, the Knicks and then yeah. their next game, they don't cover the spread. 13, 23 and run against the spread in their next game since January 1st when the Knicks made that OG trade. So these teams don't play well after playing the Knicks, but 76ers can't score enough, in my opinion. I stick to the under. 218, 216, okay. whatever you got. I think it goes under 205, probably. Who knows? I couldn't talk you off. Yeah, and I would I like what Chris was saying. Like, I would I even if I feel like you like the under, then you definitely like Raptors team total under because um mm-hmm. they might not even touch hundred, they might not even touch 95 points in there. So one thing about the Sixers, they have been playing really good defense. Maxi being out wouldn't really uh like affect that. You see what I'm saying? They've been playing really great team defense. Um, so I could I could definitely see that. Kyle Lowry going back to Toronto as well, maybe look towards his points prop. Um, like I'm not the big Biggest prop guy, but I do notice like some of these narratives when these guys are playing their old team or shit like this. Those are like I don't really care what they've averaged in the last few games. Like for that game, they're look they're coming to play, and obviously Lowry uh, loves going to go and play in Toronto. So we can talk you off looking at his points, maybe points assists, um, or just PRA. But Raptors team total under seems like a really good look in this game, guys. Let's go over to the streets of Charlotte in this one. Hornets getting 14 and a half, uh, Chris, at the house versus the L.A. Clippers in this one. Total sitting at 215. Um, I just, I mean, these big numbers scare me with the Clippers. We know that they're supposed to be a good team. They just go out there and bullshit uh, all the time. You see what I'm saying? So, And the Hornets, they're not a great team, but they can really be scrappy as well. Um, you need to see what's – I think Miller came back in his last game, but he he did go to the locker room and was pretty banged up. If he's out, that's huge for the Hornets. I'll tell you that right now. They can't afford to be having nobody else out. Uh, what do you think about this game? They can't afford to have nobody out is what you is <laughs> right, Jay. It, it looked like he going to play. Um, Pogoszewski, I think, is um, listed as a game time decision. He also got banged up in that last one. But uh, you mentioned it, Jay. I'm kicking the LJ, man. I don't got nothing on this game. I'm not. I, I know I'm not. This line opened at 16 yesterday. And some brave souls in the world came in and put some money on Charlotte. <laughs> they 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 braver than me, Jay. But uh, but it makes sense, you know. Clippers not playing too much defense as mm-hmm. of late. Um, but I I I'm not trusting you know this Clippers team to win by to win by this big of a margin. Um, I, I couldn't get there with the over. I couldn't get there with the under. This was a clear stay away game for me, Jay. Only thing I will say is that the Charlotte uh, Charlotte really struggles to start the game, which is why their first quarter team total was 24 and a half, extremely low number in today's NBA. But uh, you mentioned it, Jay. Like Clippers could come out here BSing, man, and uh, you know let the shot let Charlotte hit a couple shots, and next thing you know, you find yourself in the game. So uh, it's nothing I feel strong enough to put my heart or money on, Jay. I'm going. I'm passing it, LJ. <laughs> <What> you- <laughs> hey, I'm 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 killing Clippers early, man. Uh, I dive okay. into the numbers, and you mentioned it early on your show, Chris. Clippers first quarter. I'm gonna go on and jump on it. Minus four and a half. Uh, well, actually, the numbers 10 and 4 on the road versus the East. They won seven out of their eight, like eight games on the road versus the East as well. But the reason why I went to the first quarter, Clippers 7 and 3 against the spread in the first quarter, last 10 on the road versus the East, 3 and 2 in the last five, first quarter on the road. So I'm just going to take them early because I don't trust them to cover this whole game. They may get bored, you know what I'm saying? And some of these teams, <laughs> they, they don't have any interest when they're up by 20 some points. So the Hornets could easily come back and cover that spread, man. So for those chances, I'm not going to take. Just stick to the first quarter. The Hornets are 0-6 in the first quarter at home versus the East in their last six games. And we're talking teams like Memphis, the Jazz. You know, they're beating them in the first quarter. So if the Clippers can't beat them in the first quarter, that is going to be an embarrassment, man. So I'm going to stick to the first quarter, minus four and a half. Get in and get the fuck out. Like hot potato, I couldn't talk you off um, there because, like you said, I mean they do have a big game versus the Kings. Like they're gonna be traveling across country, so they'll probably try to get this game over with quick so they can uh, rest their starters. Uh, you never really know with the Clippers, but they should be able to do whatever the hell they want. And even though Miller's not on the injury report, I saw him pretty hobble last game. He ended up coming back, but like. As a basketball player, those those type of things don't like uh, with an ankle sprain or, or a knee or something like that. Those things don't really just like heal overnight. You see what I'm saying? So it could be it could hobble you for a few days there. And if Miller's not making threes, then uh, it's gonna be tough for the Horn because he's been their best player here uh, lately. You see what I'm saying? So I couldn't. I like that look there, LJ Clippers in the first quarter. I hadn't bet a first quarter in forever, but I like that look. That's a really good look right there, my guy. 
Let's go over to the streets of Brooklyn in this one. Nets getting six and a half points at the house versus the LA Lakers in this one. Nets quietly won three straight games, man. I'm watching the last game versus the Bulls. These Muller efforts were making everything. They were making everything from three, my guys. So they actually looked like they were like a little bit locked in and starting to play a lot better basketball, especially at the house. Um, but this is a Dinwiddie revenge game. Like you got to look at Dinwiddie. I can't find it anywhere. If somebody in the chat, let me know what y'all see. Spencer Dinwiddie points in. Um, <laughs> I think that's the look here. I think that's the look. Uh, obviously, the Lakers are coming off a, a blowout loss. They are playing these road games. The Lakers should win this game. But mm -hmm. um, like I said, I mean, the Nets have sneakily been playing some good basketball here lately. I wouldn't be surprised if they were able to keep this game close. But uh, just didn't win any points. I feel like this is a narrative type of spot where the team knows, like, all right, let's get him the ball. You know what I'm saying? He, you know what I'm saying? This team, they, they, uh, they cut him or gave him a buyout let's get him the ball he can come back in uh brooklyn show these m efforts what they missing here so when it when it comes out i think then what he points is the best look uh in this game chris what do you think here yeah it's probably not available yet because they want to wait on the status of brown and ad is what i'm thinking right both yeah. of those guys they listed as questionable every chris, single game every man. no you're bro, right you're a, right oh. <laughs> you're right <laughs> i'm just saying that's this probably a why smirky, it's, not a, it's a soap opera bro like come yeah, on it man. is it is on, it, man. It, it, it definitely is no you're right um and, and you mentioned the Jay Lakers don't typically cover on the road, 14 and 21 straight up, 15 and tw uh, 20 against the spread on the road. Um, I, th I do think it's a little bit of a bounce back spot. And if it's a revenge game, Jay spot as well. Brooklyn mm -hmm. did beat them 130 to 112 at seven point dogs back on January 19th. And Brooklyn hit a ton of threes in that game. Uh, they hit 19 in that game in LA. Remember, LA came out, I think they covered the first quarter, maybe even covered the first half and got smoked uh, pretty much right after that. So, um, I think the Lakers, uh, you got to be watching what, what's going on with, with Golden State and seeing that they're winning games. You got to be going, watching, seeing what's going on with Houston. And um, you can't let your foot up off the gas. Lakers actually got a chance. I know you mentioned it last week, Jay, to, to, for the, for, to you know, win a they, they had a chance to go on like a five game win streak. Of course, they came out super flat. Offense wasn't there against the Indiana Pacers. It was a third game of four nights and a fourth and sixth form. I think that they can bounce back in this spot. I want to fade the Nets, Jay, off off a uh, off a loss like off a win like that. Mm -hmm. They're two and nine. The Nets are two and nine straight up, two and eight against the spread, coming off a win as a dog, including seven straight losses and seven straight non covers, and um, coming off that tough loss against the Pacers. I think it is a little bit of a bounce back spot, but they don't cover, Jay. It's the reason why I didn't get involved in this one. Um, also wanted to look towards the Lakers team total over their eight and four to the over as road favorites, typically relying a lot more on their offense than their defense. I think they got major matchup, matchup advantages here, being able to get to the rim, which the Brooklyn Nets haven't been defending that well. And uh, Brooklyn has been done, doing a really good job at the three-point line, though, and the Lakers have been making threes as well. So um, I say all that, Jay, to say that, you know, it's, it's Lakers or nothing. I, I think uh, after three straight wins, I think Brooklyn's um, – I don't think they win in the game. And, and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're just putting it at that. Uh, but I didn't play the game. I can feel that. What you think, LJ? Um, I just know I want Dinwiddie points. That's all I know. I, that's what I'm looking for in this game, LJ. What do you think here? Who, who you think going to win by how much, my guy? I mean, I'm expecting the Lakers to win, but six and a half is a stretch for me. Um, for the most part, this is a revenge game, like Chris just mentioned. And the Lakers aren't good as a role favorite. Three and nine against the spread as a role favorite. That's second worst in the NBA. Mind you, the Nets are nine and 19 against the spread versus the West, which is the worst in the NBA. <laughs> so I didn't go to a side, man. I, I'm, I'm really leaning the team total over, like Chris just mentioned, the Lakers, when they when they win, they like to score. And that's the only good thing going for them right now. For everybody's in. They are eight, and they're eight out of their last 11 games to their 120 points they've scored. So if they can get to 120, they can win the game. I see it's at 115. So that's a good look, too, team total over. But I, I just couldn't come to a side. It's too much revenge factors in this game. Both team, both players on each team has played versus this team. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So you exactly. never know who's going to be inspired. Uh, AD should eat. You know what I'm saying? He had 26, 12, and 6 the last game. So his points should be a good look. LeBron James' assists always are a good look. You know, he's hitting 7, 8 assists a game. So those things I just want to point out. But like Chris just mentioned, the Nets smoked it from the three last game, 40% from the three-point line of the last game. So Lakers should be out for revenge, you know, to shut the Nets down. They're coming off three wins like you just mentioned. So, But other than that, man, I, I stayed away. I'm just going to stick to a couple of props because I don't trust both these teams against the spread.
No, it's a fact. Yeah, I could see Dennis Schroeder having some extra motivation here. Remember, he fumbled the bag uh, with the Lakers over there. He'll he'll never forget about that, I'm sure. Uh, his family won't either. But Dennis Schroeder could be a good look. But I I just really feel like Dinwiddie and this one, like there's gonna come, they're gonna make a concerted effort to get him the ball. Whether it's D'Angelo Russell, LeBron pass him the ball, like you say, LJ, and like you say, AD as well. Um, he he hadn't been Mr. Glass that much this year. You know what I'm saying? He should dominate in this game, man. So, um, and I'd be doing hack of clacks and make make him make some free throws. So that's what I'd be doing. But then yep. I just got this feeling that then with the points, that's the play here, man. Let's go over to the streets of Washington, D.C. Wizards getting 11 at the house versus the Heat. Absolutely nothing, Chris. I don't even really want to speak on this fucking game. Like, what are we doing here? So, yeah, I'll be super quick too, Jay. Put me on a 30 second timer real quick. Uh, so you get. <laughs> So you get Washington with, with Kuzma listed as questionable. He's the only hiccup in this game so far. Tyus Jones is still going to be out. Uh, and Miami on the road, Jay, this is where they tend to play basketball, man. It's typically mm-hmm. t- towards the under. I think it's uh, 27 and 10 to the under. So if mm-hmm. you blindly been telling them, you know, just backing them in this spot, you, 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 you really have to play nothing else. You're up about 70, you know, 70 units on the season. Miami on the road with a total of 220 or less, 12 and 5 to the under only allowing about 103 points per game. They've held 15 of their 17 uh, opponents under their team total on the road when the total was less than 220. And I don't think Washington's going to be able to score, Jay. So I'll just leave it right there. Watch the team total under 104 and a half, uh, 103 and a half, whatever that number is. But like I said, want to wait on Kuzma because if he's in, you get a higher number and, and you're just being smarter. So that's the only way I would look is that watch the team total under and for uh, the Heat to be able to keep it going here. Yeah, LJ, they lost last time. They just lost uh, three weeks ago to the Wizards at the house as well. I remember that game because they had came all the way back. They were down 10 with like two minutes left, came all the way back to tie the game and just couldn't get the job done. Uh, it missed a couple of game-winning threes as well. So you got a little revenge spot here for the Heat as well, who obviously need to win um, every single game. Uh, what do you think in this one? Should we lay 11 with them on the road, though, LJ? No, I went Lady 11. I, I expect them to win just because they play well versus their division. You just mentioned they lost to this team last game, and they're 5-1 on the road versus the division. So they should win this game, 7-3 against the spread last 10 on the road. But I'm not trusting it just because what Chris just mentioned, team total under for Wizards, and you might as well take the under, you know, because Miami trends to the under on the road. They only allow 102 points on the road on the low. So I don't see the Wizards scoring a lot, but I'm going to stick to this prop that I've been taking, bam, I take him on the road versus the East, over 33 and a half PRA. He's hit the, he hit this the last game versus the Wizards, and he's hit it six out of his last seven games on the road versus the East. 33 and a half PRA for Bam. He should get all the rebounds. He should score, get some assists out there. And the Wizards give up a lot to this position. Yeah. Vucevic had a 44. My man Amir Thompson for the Rockets hit him with 37 PRA twice. Sabonis had a 34. You know, even Duran just had a 38. So, They're really vulnerable at that position. So Bam should eat, get his PRA, and like I said, the game should go under. But I didn't take the under. I'm just going to stick to the prop, Bam's BRA, and just stick with that. Hey, Jay, real quick, real real quick, Jay, to your point, LJ, and you mentioned this too, Jay, the Heat as road favorites seeking revenge this season, 3-1 and to the under. All four of their opponents have actually gone under their team total. The Blazers scored 96, the Nets scored 95. The Bulls scored 100, and the, the Hornets scored 105. They're averaging – they're giving up 99 points across four games as road yep. favorites, revenging games this season. That's crazy. Yeah, it sounds it sound like the Wizards have been giving it up to them centers, man. And we, they don't really have a real center uh, as well, man. Marvin Bagley, uh, Rashawn Holmes, whenever he does play – I know he was out last game. Not sure if he's back here, but Wizards don't really have a center. Bam should absolutely feast um, in this game, man. Probably Jimmy Butler as well. Everybody going to feast here, man, versus the Wizards mm-hmm. defense. See what I'm saying? So I, I know if I say Jordan Poole on the other side, I'll give me the ball. Give me that. That's that's uh, that's barbecue chicken all day. So I'm saying I know plenty of people out there barbecuing uh, today, man, for Easter. That's that's the Wizards' defense. Barbecue chicken, a little seasoning. You know what I'm saying? Uh, put some lemon juice, on a little lemon course. pepper. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so could only look towards the heat in a revenge spot. 11 feels hard, but they are just coming off smoking the team by 60 points with no problem, man. But them really good numbers there by LJ. I definitely could see Bam having a great game here. Uh, he could do whatever he wants in the paint over there, my guys. Let's go over to the streets of San Antonio on this one. Spurs getting eight and a half points at the house versus the uh, Warriors in this one, man. Um, I wouldn't bet against the Warriors here for the, for the near future. I know that Steph is a little, little like he's a little pissed at Draymond for the stuff he's been doing. He's probably tired of it. He's probably ready for him to be off the team. Uh, might even be thinking like, damn, should we have kept Jordan Poole and let Draymond go? But maybe not go that far. But the Spurs have actually won three straight games. I don't know if they've won three straight all year. But I just know that I'm not betting against the Warriors uh, right now. I do think that there's like 
uh, like conspiracy jade speaks and it's like the warriors are like like the the league is going to help that like they're not missing the play in term it's not going to have they might not make the playoffs but they at least need them ratings for at least one of those games you see what i'm saying and what have you saw they've won their last three and covered last three as well everybody and their mom and their grandma was on them versus the magic guess what the warriors went out there and covered that game wire to wire and that was a game that showed me like all right maybe they're maybe it's time that they're like they're like all right let's stop bsing around every game is like a playoff game to the warriors i wouldn't bet against them right here to be honest with you Chris what uh, what you like here yeah and to your point Jay Steph said maybe when they get back to you know to the bay they probably stay at hotels because for some reason they just can't get it right on the, <laughs> at home but they they roll warriors he said that after the game Jay I thought that was funny uh you still got you got Clay and Kaminga listed as questionable of course Clay didn't play in that last game um but that's cool you know last game of a five game road trip for San Antonio Jay you mentioned uh three straight outright wins as a dog they, they beat Phoenix then they went to Utah then they came back home and beat the Knicks as well. But I want to fade them because they're coming off the overtime game because it's a big letdown spot. And they're going to be without two starters. No Kelton Johnson, no Jeremy Sohan. So I, I'm, I'm taking Golden State. I just want to see what the what, what happens with the line with Clay and, and Kaminga. If both of those guys are rolled in, I do expect it to move up. And this line did open at eight. So money is coming in. I think that's sharp money coming in on Golden State in this spot, Jay, even though the mm -hmm. San Antonio Spurs have been real high. Um, I looked at a couple of different things, and I'll kick it to LJ. San Antonio, 0-3 straight up, 1-2 against the spread off an of overtime game this season. They've mm -hmm. lost by 40 and 41 to the Clippers and the Pacers in this spot. The Warriors, 13-4 against the spread as road favorites, 76.5%, winning by an average of 11 points. They've won and covered 11 straight as road favorites. And I'm taking San Antonio team total under as well, Jay. Golden State's held six straight and 10 of their last 11 opponents under their team total when they're road favorites. Uh, last three games, they got a defensive rating of 100.4, which is the third best. So I think they keep it rolling here today, Jay. And I'm, I'm cool with fading San Antonio when I know a lot of people probably going to be on them because they've been hidden. But uh, yeah, give me the Warriors and give me the under for their team total for San Antonio, under 109 and a half. That's a really good look there. I like that. Uh, you said, what is it, 109 and a half for the Spurs? I like that. Yeah, because the Warriors been locking down on defense too. Just hope uh we gotta start being able to uh, bet on if Draymond will get thrown out the game and shit, man. But they've been playing really locked in um on defensive end. Obviously, that's where it starts. If you want to get back to your identity, um, you, you know what I'm saying? You uh, play with play really tight defense and then you play with pace as well, LJ. Uh, what do you think about this game? You think the Warriors in a smack city spot here? Yes, I do believe it. Uh just because Chris just mentioned how they are 11 straight road, they covered 11 straight as a road favorite. I do even better. 13 and three against the spread their last 16 on the road. So they, they've been balling in this position and I don't see anything different today. So I'm on the nine. I already locked it in. Uh, the Spurs, five and 17 at home versus the West. Um, and like I mentioned, coming off that overtime game versus the Knicks, I think they're going to digress very, very much. And the Warriors mm -hmm. just been chilling. They just played the Hornets. Didn't have to put up too much of a fight. So, and like I said, the Warriors and the Rockets are right there in their 10th spot trying to get out of that play in. So, mm -hmm. as long as the Warriors keep winning, I think the Rockets will, could keep winning out. And the head to head is coming next Thursday, as we mentioned off Thanks. the line. But That's Warriors okay. today for sure. I'm on the nine. I'm on also under, under 227. I don't believe Spurs get to 100 barely, like Chris just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And the Warriors are 11 and three to under on the road last 14 games. So, when they on the road, they, they play defense and keep these teams under their totals. So, well, for me, minus the eight and a half for the Warriors, under 227. Lock it in. No. Yeah, I like that. I like this Spurs. It, like that all sounds like the recipe for a Spurs team total under as well, Chris. So that's a really good look. I don't see them getting past 105 here as well. It could be an alternate team total spot here for the Spurs. Uh, if the Warriors really come in lockdown and the Spurs could possibly run out of gas, even though they've had a day off when you're coming off that overtime game and a huge game um versus the Knicks as well. You see what I'm saying? That was a huge win there, back and forth type of spot. Brunson has 61 in there. I believe I think he has 61 in that game. Wimby's like, no, nah, you can't have this ball. <laughs> Do that right. shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, nah, get your ass up out of here. You lost. Now, if you won, maybe I give you the ball. Now, get your little small ass up out of here. I'm double. You come to my kneecaps. Now, get your ass up out of here. But yeah, the funniest now, shit I've seen in a long time, dude. <laughs> Warriors and Spurs team total under seem like the looks here. Um, I that's what I agree with in this one, man. Let's go over here to the streets of H Town in this one. Rockets getting two and a half points at the house versus the Dallas Mavs in this one. Man, both of these teams have been absolutely rolling, my guys. They've been absolutely rolling. Up, uh, I, I ain't gonna lie to you. 
I feel like if the so Luca's MVP odds is like at plus 1100 right now. If they win this game, that plus 1100 might be gone, man, because we know that he leads the league in points. He's not the best defender whatsoever, but obviously that's not really criteria of being the MVP. If that was the case, then uh, SGA might be with leading the steals over there. But um, I don't, I don't really want to bet against either one of these teams right now. But if I had to play this game, I'd be taking the Mavs. I know LJ is not going to agree with it. Uh, Rock has been balling out. They have, my guys, but. Um, I don't think they can fuck with the Mavs. Not Mavs full squad. This team is fucking rolling. I mean, I'm watching the last game versus the Kings. They're down 15. They, they knew they were going to get their best shot from the Kings. You know what I'm saying? Mavs just kind of slowly but surely just trickle away. And then the, the fact that you win a game when you're down 17, 18 points in a in a rowdy environment like that and in a revenge spot, Mavs just like, no, we're just a better team. Man, Ramadan Kyrie is going crazy. Now, Luka is banged up. I'll tell you that right now. Luka's playing through an injury, uh, a few injuries. Kyrie is as well. But – Man, they just they're getting contributions from Gafford, lively off the bench, PJ Washington. Um, this team is very real rounded. I'm I'm telling y'all, man, the Mavs are fucking coming, man. Like the Mavs could fuck around and go to like they can make a little run in the playoffs, Chris. Uh, I'm not betting against right now. I know the Rockets been red hot, but they they're kind of teetering on a loss, in my opinion. Probably should have lost to the Jazz over there, Chris. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I said the same exact thing, Jay. Something that you didn't talk to people, man, is that you got to know what's going on. You got to be able to follow it. Outside of that game where they were, were laying eight points and only ended up winning by one in Utah the other day, Jay, they also, uh, you know, had to go to overtime with Houston as well. So I think, I mean, I'm sorry, with uh, with OKC as well, right? Mm -hmm. they, they went to OKC in that game. So to me, it's, it's lost what you it's, it's, Should have lost should, going. Eventually they catch up with you at some point, right? And the only thing that gives me a little bit of hesitation, Jay, is like you said, is how 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 effective is Luca going to be? He did say I, I saw the beat writer say that he said that he was good. He said I'm good, even yeah. though I did you know bang that knee a couple times. Um, and it's the fourth game of a five game road trip, but mm -hmm. I'm not fading Dallas, Jay. I, I tell you that. That's one thing I know I'm not doing. Um, understanding that the Rockets are seven and two straight up and against the spread. Uh, as a home dog of three points or less, and ten and seven straight up, and twelve and five against the spread as home dogs this season, it still matters or nothing for me. This team is seventeen and three straight up, sixteen and four against the spread as a road favorite. R very reminiscent of Golden State and what we just talked about. They're winning those games by an average of seven points, and the nine and four straight up and against the spread in road games with a three point spread either way. So these tight games don't they they find in them, Jay. We just saw mm -hmm. Kyrie hit a twenty foot hook shot with his left hand against Jokic. <laughs> Against Jokers, and that won't and Luca ain't even touched the ball. So yeah, I'm not I'm not betting against them. And like I, I said this earlier, and you said it as well, Jay. Strength of schedule wise, uh, you go through and look at. And I'm not trying to nitpick, uh, you know, Houston because they have they do have some good wins, but mm -hmm. they've also beat the Trailblazers a couple times and the Wizards in there. So uh, you you got to take it with a grain of salt, man. If I had to play it, Jay, I'd be I'd be uh, Dallas money line for me. Uh, but definitely want to wait till Luca get ruled in. And this is going to be a game, Jay, where I think, even though it's a good game and I feel like I got the right side, I think I'm going to sit back and watch this one, Jay. I just want to see mm -hmm. how it play out. Facts. No, that's a fact. And it could be a spot where, uh, well, the Rockets have been kind of coming out slow, LJ, for whatever reason. They've mm -hmm. been coming out slow, and then in the second half, they'll just put it in. Like, I promise you, the last five games they've gotten down, it's like, oh, could this be the game? And then they just go crazy in the fourth quarter. You see what I'm saying? So that could possibly happen here. But the Mavs have been really good at closing these games, man. They, the game versus the King, the second game, like really shut down. obviously that first one they fucking smoked the shit out of the kings but that second one when the kings were like ready for them man i was just like no nah, bro we just we just better lj we what do you think, what you think? <laughs> no that's the fact we the big dog. and the, i don't know the man was just like they really showing that like we're not even gonna be in a playing tournament like we're getting like number six seed we might even get the number five seed or something like they're they ain't playing around lj you go into this game what do you think happens uh here my brother Man, I'm going to sit on the sideline with y'all, brothers, just because both these teams are, are, are playing very, very well. And against the spread versus the West, these are number two and number three teams against, against the spread versus the Western Conference. And Chris just mentioned Dallas 16-4 and four against the spread as a road favorite. Rockets 8-2 and two against the spread last team and, and first half at home. 12-5 and five as a home dog, 8-2 and two against the spread last 10. So I don't know, man. I'm just going to sit on the sideline. I'm going to take my wife to the game. She loves Luka. That's her favorite player. So we're just going to sit back. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Just enjoy the festivities. But I am going to be on a prop. I'm going to take my man, Amir Thompson, double-double, plus 106. And I'm going to take his PRA over 28, seven and a half minus plus 104. He's had a double-double three out of his last four games. And this man just stays on the boards, man. He's a hog. Mm -hmm. He hustles. You know, and that's what the Rockies do. Like you mentioned, when they start off slow, they're an adjustment team. A Duke will call mm -hmm. a timeout, make some adjustments. Rockies get back on. You see what I'm saying? They, they mm -hmm. listen to their coach. 
and they're, they're an example of their coach. And I love the way that he instills defense with them. They don't give up. They hustle. You know, and he keeps people accountable. If you're not doing your job, he's going to take you out the game. Get out. You Get out of there. So I love that type of attitude. That's what the Rockets needed with the young team that they have. Right. So they are trending heavy, but like you just mentioned, they are teetering on the loss. Dallas is good. Luka is a superstar. Triple doubles always in play, but he's still hobbling a little bit. So I don't know how effective he's going to be. If we bang him up, you know, Luka don't like to be physical. So if we bang him up, he'll probably get mad, get out of his game. You see what I'm saying? So anything can happen. This is a divisional game. This is a big game, too. Both these are rivals. So I'm going to take my wife to the game, sit back and enjoy it. But I'm on Amir Thompson's double-double and his PRA over 27 minutes. <clears throat> And tell her to put that Luca jersey on as well. You see what I'm saying? If she don't have one, you're gonna have to go, you're gonna have to go buy her one. I think I actually think that like I, I had SGA for MVP. Um, it's not that it can't happen anymore. I still think it's really possible. I think M, uh Luca's really making a late push uh for MVP. I really, I really do. And I, they've been wanting him to get it. He's been like the preseason favorite for the last last couple of years. I think um uh, Luca the win MVP plus eleven hundred is worth maybe like a little sprinkle there, but I think it's the rebounds over nine and a half. Like he makes it a point to guard the worst shooter on the floor. I bet you he's gonna be guarding Thompson and he's gonna make sure that he stays close to the basket so he can get his he's gonna get his triple double, he's gonna get his double double at least. So Nine and a half rebounds, I think for Luca, um, is good over there. Even if he's not scoring as much, he's gonna make sure he get those ten rebounds, man. But I just wanted to ask y'all, why are we not taking the under here? This is a playoff game right here. The Rockets obviously play their best with defense. The Mavs have some defenders to throw it. Jalen Green as well. You see what I'm saying? Um, I feel like this is gonna be an under type game. I think two thirty one is a tad high here, Chris. I'm surprised yeah. either one of y'all missed it. I had I had notes on the total, but I wanted to try to keep the show moving. Uh, you mentioned it, Dallas eight and two to the under last ten, including six straight. I mean, this defense is locking everybody up. And Houston, we, we talked about it playing against some cupcakes, man. That offense has it kind of ran out of gas in Utah the other day, so we expect mm -hmm. that regression to keep going. Um, also looking at it, uh, what Dallas nine and four to the under when they're in road games with three point spread either way. So any kind of tightly contested road games, they've been going under as well. And Houston, while their offense has been good, they've been a really great defensive team as well. Mm -hmm. uh, as we just saw, I cashed on Jazz team total under on Friday night in that uh, in that game. Uh, as soon as uh, Lloyd Marketing got ruled out, so yeah, it's a under it's under a, a nothing for me, Jay. I just didn't play it. I think this shit going on. I don't play totals, but I, I know that this is a playoff style type of game. And if the when the Rockets at the house, like uh, LJ said, Udoka, he's going to make the adjustments that he needs to. You see what I'm saying? They have the defenders um, out there, man. I think this game's going on at 231. I'd be looking at uh, uh, Luka over his rebounds, over nine and a half, because I do think he's going to make it a point. He They could be up 30, and he's staying out there to get them fucking rebounds. You see what I'm saying? So uh, it's just something I've been noticing. But I do lean towards the Mavs on the money line to get this win. Like, they're rolling. They know that this is a huge game. They'll own – this will put them even higher in the standings. Like, if they win this game, it's almost like a guarantee that they won't be in the play-in tournament. You see what I'm saying? So um, this is a huge game for the Mavs here. They know it. They Obviously, they've been on the road here for a little while. But um, I think the Rockets kind of teetering on the loss in this one, man. So let's go over here. We got, like, three more games here, my guys. Let's go over to the streets of New York in this one. Knicks, land a point and a half at the house versus the Thunder. They kind of hit us with the okey-doke. Uh, uh, I was going to say LJ Doubtful. LJ's here. He's available. Uh SGA, doubtful. People hopping on the Knicks. Oh, it go up to three. And then, oh, he go to shoot around. Oh, he up the grades of quest, but hit him with the okie though, real quick. I mean, the Knicks can still fuck around and get the win, but they are coming back to the house off a road trip, coming off a huge overtime game as well. Uh, loss versus the Spurs there. Uh, um, Brunson's probably tired. Like, when you wait, take that many shots, you're tired the next game. Your wrist is tired. Trust me, I know you see the Jonte Murray yesterday. Boy, it's tied, boss. Uh, but Chris, what do you think about this game, my brother? You think the Knicks bounce back, or you think the uh, do you think the Thunder uh, get a get a dub here? Uh, a difficult game, Jay. Uh, this is another one I'm gonna be on the sideline for because I I don't. You you mentioned the flash spot for the Knicks, here, Jay. Uh, Jay, they they are um coming off an overtime game. They're coming. Mm -hmm. It should be a bounce back spot because they should have beat the San Antonio Spurs. Um, but you also coming off the. I don't like that they're coming off the overtime game and it's their first game back home after that little road trip. Uh, OKC proved in that last game against Phoenix that they you know they got what it take. Um, and granted, I I don't know who Phoenix is, Jay. That's another conversation for a different day. I have no idea who the Phoenix Suns are right now. But um, SGA gets ruled in, and OKC, we mentioned the motivation here, Jay. They, they are tied with the um, you know, mm -hmm. with the Dallas Mavericks up at the top. I think – I'm sorry, with the Minnesota Timberwolves up at the top of the Western Conference. I think Minnesota does hold the um, home court advantage because they got the better record. But 
Uh, so so they'll be super motivated in this spot, and they do well, Jay, as road dogs. Seven to five straight up, seven four against the spread as a as a, a road dog this season, and they do well coming off a win as a as a dog. So they it ain't like they they you know let up off the gas in this spot. Um, the Knicks could potentially bounce back here. I, I just I, this is a game that I'm per- ter- perfectly fine with sitting on the sidelines, Jay. Mm-hmm. I did look at the spot. I want to say this. So since the 2011 season, we're going back about 14 years now. Home favorites coming off a loss facing an opponent that's coming off a win as a dog, 162 and 54 straight up. That says that the Knicks win the game on the money line here, Jay, but I didn't play it. Uh, I'm going to sit on the sidelines in this one. Yeah, it's a super tough game, man, because we don't know if it's – I mean, even if he comes back, LJ, we don't know how how uh, well he is. Obviously, he wants to come back. He wants to win MVP. They want to get the number one seed. But when with someone like a quad, um, like I would have I would have expected them to be out. But if he went through shooting round, he's probably playing, guys. So if I, I just want to say if you do like the Thunder, he's probably going to play in this one because if he wasn't going to play, he wouldn't, they would have just rested him even with the uh, shooting round. You see what I'm saying? Uh, what do you think here, LJ, with SGA likely going to play here? Yeah, I think this game could go either way. Um, they pulled the okie doke again like you did, like you did last Sunday with, with Giannis. So who knows what's going to happen, man. Um, but the ultimate thing is probably just to trend to the under, just because the Knicks are at home, 26-11 mm-hmm. to the under at home. So that's probably the best look. But we don't know how they're going to respond off that overtime win uh, loss versus San Antonio. Uh, OKC is 15-9 to against the spread versus the East. So they play very well in this position. So if Shea comes back, he probably knows that they have a good against the spread record versus the Eastern Conference, and they're probably catching the Knicks vulnerable coming off an overtime game. So mm-hmm. that's probably the mindset that Oklahoma City has, but I stayed on the sidelines. I'm going to take a prop, though, for sure. I got to take Josh Hart's rebounds, man. He's been the lead rebounder since uh, the injuries has been out. So over 11 and a half rebounds is plus 114, and I'm going to jump on it just because he's averaging 12 rebounds the last six home games in this month, and he's averaging 11 and a half rebounds the last four games. Now, the PRA is also a good look, too, over 28 and a half, because he's hit this four out of his last seven games. But I'm just going to stick to the rebounds because he's a rebounding machine. I believe Brunson does go under as well, coming off his 60 point yep. game. But other than that, lean heavy to the under, but no official play on the side. Yeah, especially if they put Dort on Brunson as well. It's going to be a really tough matchup. Uh, Dort is like big. He's a lot uh, bigger as well. Like he could really, he's not, nobody's going to lock down Brunson, but he could definitely stifle him or keep him at bay for sure, man. So uh, could definitely, but yeah, it's crazy how Josh Hart be getting them rebounds, man. He's like one of the smallest guys out there and he just hunts them boards, man. He just got a feel for where the ball's going to go, man. I, I respect there for sure. Let's go over to the streets of Minnesota in this one. Wolves land eight and a half points at the house versus the Chicago Bulls. Man, I'm, I'm kind of pissed, man, because I, I got a lot of money on Malik Monk to win six men a year. I still think that he should, but the fact that he's going to be out for the uh, for the rest of the 10 games, he's already played enough games. To, so it's not like he's disqualified, but like, I just know how recency bias works. He was at minus 4,000 to win it. You know what I'm saying? Now it's down to minus 140. Um, so I'm what I'm going to do, I'm going to take Nas Reed over his points, hoping that it loses, if that makes sense. Like I'm take he's the only guy that could catch Malik Monk for six men a year. So I'm probably going to take his points. Um, like if it's a good matchup, which I do think it is versus the Bulls, it says 17 and a half. Like I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it doesn't cash because if he doesn't do uh, good enough in these last 10 games, they still got to give it to Mungo. I got a bunch of money on this shit. You see what I'm saying? So, um, I'll play, I'll play Nas Reed over his 17 and a half points, hoping that he doesn't, does he, that he doesn't get it, man. But that's my angle on this game here. What do y'all think? Cause Bulls coming off a bad loss where they got smoked in the second half versus the Nets. Wolves coming off a huge win versus the Nuggets, man. I know they got the advantage here, especially with size, um, but I just I got a bad feeling about the Wolves laying eight and a half. I feel like this could be a major letdown spot here, Chris. Yeah, me too, Jay. Major letdown spot. Um, we know that, you know, Coach Chris Finch has called his team immature all throughout the season. And now that they're back at the top of the Western Conference, I, I, I would, you know, laying eight and a half, and they got the big game against Houston coming up on Tuesday, Jay. I'm, and it's a non-conference game, so, it's, you know, it's a sandwich spot, as my guy R.C. would say. Um, so yeah, it's not, it's not anything that I'm playing. And you mentioned the Bulls spot, Jay. Um, they're not good for, for whatever. The Bulls are a hard team to figure out. They, they were four and six, uh, straight up and three and seven against the spread in their last 10. However, they are, they, they bounce back, Jay. You mentioned the bounce back spot Bulls nine and two straight up seven and four against the spread when they're playing, uh, off a loss as a favorite. So when they've lost as a favorite, they've, they've covered, uh, seven of those last, uh, seven of 11 times and seven straight, Jay, they got seven straight mm-hmm. covers. Coming off a loss as a favorite. So why I don't want to necessarily, you know, look towards them because their offense can be so stagnant at times, man. Right. I'm I'm not I'm not taking I'm not laying eight and a half. So it's Chicago or nothing for me, but 
I stayed away from the game. Also, you got a revenge spot for Minnesota, Jay. They lost 129 yeah. to 123 in Chicago on February 6th, laying four and a half there. Um, so maybe a look towards the over as well, because I do feel like that this this total seems like it's so low that Chicago messing around coming in and score a couple extra points. You know that total gonna be super low because Minnesota, the best defense at home. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, Minnesota should be able to score as well. So maybe even a look just towards the over Jay, because it's an extremely mm -hmm. low total. And we don't expect Minnesota to be locked in here. That's mm -hmm. a fact. You know what, LJ? You know it's a really good look. Some I figured out. I've been watching the Bulls, and Kobe Wyatt is still not really back from his hip injury. He has not been shooting the ball well whatsoever. They've been going up short. He's been clanking his threes, like, and I feel like that's why the Bulls struggle sometimes because they need Kobe White to be like you know what I'm saying, Kobe White or whatever. But I feel like him. He probably goes under his 18 and a half. Now I don't know if I'm gonna take because this could be the game where he'll fuck around and break out. But um, I think Kobe White is really still struggling. He's not fully back. That's that's why you watch these games because you'll notice little things like that i think kobe white goes under his 18 and a half points here lj what do you think about this game man i'm leaning really leaning towards the over for the most part just because the wolves was playing a lot of defense against denver last game they really wanted that game mm -hmm. and i'm thinking they're gonna have a slip up in this game because it's a non-conference game they're not expecting you know the bulls to come out with a sense of urgency and like chris just mentioned the wolves got to look ahead versus another conference opponent with the rockets so Fair. who's to say they're gonna take this game seriously now they do play well versus the east especially at home eight and three at home at home versus the East, seven to four against the spread, and they're seven to three against the spread last ten. Bulls are three and seven against the spread last ten. So the Wolves should win the game. They are twenty one and three versus below five hundred teams, so they shouldn't have no problem. But I, I, I don't want to trust it just because I don't know how they're going to respond. Chris just mentioned the Bulls nine and two straight up off a loss as a favorite, but the, the the reason why I'm getting preparation is because of the three point shot. The Wolves like to shoot the three, especially at home. And the Bulls give up the second most threes made. So if the Wolves get hot from the three, they can blow the Bulls out, man. But how motivated they going to be to do that, I don't know. So for that reason, I stayed on the sideline, but I really want to lean the Wolves minus eight and a half. Also, the over is a good look. Uh, Bulls, 21 and eight and one to the over versus the Western Conference, number one in the NBA. So if you think it's going to be points, I would take the over. But the Bulls, I don't trust that they can keep up offensive-wise. So that's why I just stayed a pass. That's a fact. Yeah, and the Wolves, they, they do slip up in some of these spots. Only 13, uh, 16, and 2 against the spread as a home favorite. So sometimes they can kind of just come out and play with their food. I know that, like, mentality-wise, they like you got to have at least a little bit of a letdown coming off that huge Nuggets win, man. But uh, mm -hmm. Nas Reed over 17 to have for me, and I hope that – I hope he don't score over 10 points, man. I need him to have a bad last 10 games because uh, I really do think Malik Monk has earned, even though their team doesn't have the best record, have the better record, but I really feel like Malik Monk has um, has earned it. But this is like somewhat of a hedge. So uh, if you guys want to tell you, like it's my hedge of my Malik Monk um, um, six man of the year, guys. Last game, let's go over to the streets of Sacramento here. Um, obviously going to be without Malik Monk for probably for the rest of the season. This one, man. Uh, Kings land 12 at the house versus the Utah Jazz. Jazz aren't really a real squad here. Um, you got to look at Sabonis. Like Sabonis probably goes for a triple double here. He could do whatever the hell he wants here down low. No marketing. Then John Collins questionable as well. You really only got Kessler out there, which he hadn't really been playing as well as he was earlier this year. Um, I feel like Sabonis rebounds is like, I like, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like Sabonis, he's, this is his game right here. And they and they said, Chris, as well, that Fox and Sabonis are going to play uh, extra heavy minutes with no monk, which they have to. You know what I'm saying? So you got to look. You um, Sabonis and, and Fox props are going to be the way to go for the rest of the season, Chris. Yeah, I agree, Jay. When I when I uh, went to my phone um, earlier during the show, it was because John Collins had officially got ruled out, Jay. And now they're going to oh, okay. be even, even more shorthanded. So I hopped on Sacramento. I know it's not the greatest spot. Like, you know, I, I now that I didn't play the full game in full transparency, but this line did open at 11 and a half. Uh, it's up to 13. It's moving in favor of 13. And I mm -hmm. absolutely agree with the move there. I'm going to get in and get out, though. First half minus the six and a half is what I just mm -hmm. locked in during the live show. Because without Collins, I think it's going to be even, you know, worse for this for these guys. The Sacramento, we talked about it, Jay. 14 and 22 against the spread at home. 12 and 20 against the spread as a home favorite, two and eight against the spread as a home favorite after the all star break. They typically don't cover in this spot, but the Utah Jazz on the road, boy, <laughs> boy, 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 one and nine straight up, three and seven last 10, 12 and 19 against the spread as a, road, as a road dog, two and five against the spread as a road dog since the all star break, losing by an average of 15 points. And it's typically at the beginning of the game that they get yep. smoked. We know the Houston Rockets just dropped about 80 points on them in the first half the other day. And you get a motivated Sacramento team, Jay. That's the reason why I did it because Sacramento. Is coming off back-to-back -back losses against the Dallas Mavericks. So I don't mm -hmm. think that they're going to overlook this team. 
Uh, you mentioned Malik Monk not being there, but Kevin Herter is also not there. And you're still without Trey Lyles as well. Um, I think a look towards Sacramento first quarter is absolutely in play, but I locked in. It's a six and a half still available on BetMGM right now if people want to take it. It's moving to seven everywhere else. Um, but I like Kings early, Jay. I also like the under. Uh, it was at 221. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, we know John Collins, uh, you know, it's dropped a little bit. But you get two of the bottom 10 offensive teams uh, in basketball. Kings, number seventh in defensive efficiency over the last two weeks. Their offense is kind of taking a step back. And that, this is crazy, Jay. This, 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 this trend I looked at was crazy. But the Kevin Herter has missed nine games for the Kings this season. They're 9-0 to the under without Damn. him. And that's because he, he don't play no defense. Like he come in and he shoot the ball, he can't guard nobody, so the games mm -hmm. go over, right? Now you put, you replace him with Keon Keon um, uh, Ellis. Ellis, and and then you you bring in uh, Davion Mitchell off the bench, and you know swap. you get a lot more defense. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a big swap. So so I like the under J. Maybe a look towards um, I know Utah team total is like one hundred four and a half now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I'll just and look as at we it. get as we get Jamal Murray unlikely to play, Jay look like that just dropped too. So yeah, uh, Kings team total. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, Utah team total under, but I, I did play the – that's a lean. Um, I did play uh, Sacramento early just to get this team out the way, Jay. Six and a half uh, over on Bet MGM. Yeah, the Kings have actually been playing some really good defense. They got to be pissed off after blowing their lead versus the Mavs. Um, this under spot, I mean, it's this is what I mean by a swap. Like, you get the exact opposite. Keon Ellis and David Mitchell are kind of offensively challenged, but they're really great defenders. But when you see De'Aaron Fox and guys out there playing really nice defense, Keegan Murray as well, um, I don't think the Jazz see 100 points here. I'd be taking Jazz under their team total under 103 and a half in this one, guys. Uh, like, they just they, – they're damn near, like, really giving up on the season. When you see Laurie marking it out, like, for the rest of the season – they're kind of just like, all right, let's just collect our paychecks for the rest of these 10 games. Uh, Kings, they might smoke these motherfuckers by 30 points tonight here, LJ. What do you like in this game? I like everything that Chris said, so I'm not going to rebuild on all that, <laughs> you know. So, hey, I'm on the Kings first half. 82 against the spread, last 10 first half on the, on, at home, man. I mean, minus the seven, good money to me. Jazz is one of the worst teams on the road. He just mentioned like 19 losses against the spread as a road dog. Second worst behind the Hornets, so. Kings lost two in a row. They still at home. Sabonis triple double, of course. And the under. 10 to 1 to the under last 11 at home for the other Kings, man. So all those are good plays, but I'm officially on the first half, minus the seven. I think they smoke them first quarter and first half. And full game. This could be a trifecta spot for the Kings um, in this one. Like, just like this show right here, a trifecta <laughs> spot for the Kings. You see what I'm saying? But let's get out of here, man. We've been on here 52 minutes, my my guys. Let's recap the best bets. It's a lot of them. We gave out a lot of – I know a lot of people just come back and check the end of the show. We gave out a ton of info in this show, like actionable info, things that you could, like, use for the future as well, um, mm -hmm. LJ. So uh, break them down with your official plan. I know you probably got, like, 20 of them, LJ. But if you want, you could just go at best bets. You don't have to recap all your looks. Like, if they don't want to watch the show, you know what I'm saying? You could just do uh, your best bets. It's up to you. Whatever you want to give the people, El Jizzle. Oh, no. I'll just rapid fire with everything that I got. I'm going to start back with since we just started with the Kings and Jazz. I'm going to take the Kings first half minus the seven. I'm on the Warriors minus the nine. Heavy lean to the under as well, 227. Houston and Dallas are stayed off, but I'm on my Mir Thompson double double and his PRA over 27 and a half. I lean Wolves with the spread, but I stayed away. I just don't trust how they're going to respond after beating Denver. I'm on the Knicks, uh, Josh Hart, over 11 and a half rebounds, plus 114. He's averaging 11 and a half his last four games. And OKC gives up the third most rebounds to the fourth position. So he should be able to get those. I'm on Bam's PRA, over 33 and a half versus the Wizards. I'm on the under, 76 is Toronto, under 218. I think both teams struggle to score. I'm on the Clippers, first quarter, minus four and a half. Hornets are 361 against the spread, last 10 at home in the first quarter, 0 and 6. At home versus the West in the first quarter, last six. Lakers and Nets, I stayed off, but heavy, heavy, heavy lean towards Davis points. Um, and I, I like the angle also, Jay, that you mentioned with the Pacers. Teams that play the Pacers their next game, they mm -hmm. tend to not cover that spread. Four and 12 against the spread in their next game since the All-Star break. Teams playing the Pacers. So heavy lean towards that. Denver, Jokic, over eight and a half assists. That's all I took, plus 414. He's averaging 10 and a half assists. Last four games versus the Eastern Conference. That was my. I like it. I like it. That's a ton, LJ. Chris, what you like, my brother? What you got for the people? Yeah, let's go backwards, like uh, like LJ just did. So give me go. Give me uh, Jazz first half minus the six and a half minus the seven. Kings. You can. Kings the, first I'm half. sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely not the Jazz. Kings. <laughs> Kings. Okay. Like us. Like us. Like us. Kings. Kings. One, two, three. Kings. 
Yeah, not the Jets. Give me the, <laughs> give me the, give me the Kings in the bounce backs minus the crib, minus the six and a half, minus the yeah. seven. Uh, Golden State top player of the day though, minus the eight, minus the eight yeah. and a half. Uh, also that San Antonio team total under one hundred nine and a half. Uh, those are the three best looks. Uh, honorable mentions. Uh, LJ mentioned some of them. Toronto team total under one hundred three and a half. Uh, this 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 uh jazz team total under 103 and a half that you just mentioned, mm-hmm. Jay. Uh, yeah. especially with John Collins down there and them not being able to rebound the basketball. Also, strong, strong lean towards Dallas on the money line. I, I think that they can get the job done today, but didn't play it. Um, and those are the top looks, man. Appreciate you for having me on, Jay. LJ, enjoy the day as well, my brother. And uh, right. let's cash some tickets today, man. Let's get it. Let's do it. This is what I'd be looking at, my guys. Um, I'd be looking at Dinwiddie over his points. I know it's not out yet, but I really think it's a good look. Um, I'd lean the Warriors as well with my guy Chris there. I lean Mavs on the money line. Luca over his rebounds. The under in that game, 231. I, just, like, I don't see that game getting past 220, man. That's, a, that's an absolute rock fight right there. I feel like that's what the Rock is going to have to do, man. But mm-hmm. um. Let me see. Nas Reed over his points is like a hedge of my Malik Monk six man a year. And I really like y'all. I think the Kings go for a trifecta spot here, man. The Jazz, they're probably not going to be competitive for the rest of the year. They're coming off a competitive game um, and still end up losing their game by one point as well, man. So um, I think Sabonis goes over his rebounds. Jazz probably going their team total. And the Kings should come out here and do whatever the hell they want. They can cast a trifecta spot. King's trifecta, just like this show right here, my guys. If y'all like the show, if y'all want more of uh, of the of this trifecta spot on the Sundays, man, or Saturdays for that matter, for the rest of the season, y'all hit the like button, my guys. Y'all hit the like button. Go follow Chris on Twitter. He does a show as well. Sometimes, like, he's doing two a days over there. You see what I'm saying? He did a show this morning as well. So go follow Chris at Chris B. Capping. Go follow LJ as well at LJ Sports Media. It's all love, man. Hope everybody has a great day um, uh, with your family, man. Y'all be safe out there. Happy Easter to everybody. Um, and it's all love. Let's get this cash. Y'all hit the like button one time for the one time. And we out, my guys. Let's go. We out. Yeah.